Hey everyone, last week I asked you what the next Klexicon video should be and you said I want to see the interview with I Can't Think Straight. So I have it for you this week and if you like it please give it a thumbs up and share it like crazy because that really really helps. Okay, enjoy. Okay guys, so Shimi, you mentioned on Friday at the film screening that as a perfectionist you know you, you look back on your movies now and you think oh there's these things I wish I could have changed. Um, for all of you, if you were to make either of the movies again today with you know, unlimited time and money and all these things, what would you change about it, if anything? Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think uh, with more time, more money for making these movies, and if I could do it again today, I think there would be a change in the, you know, I think it's subtle. It's maybe the shot making, the editing, some of the, the direction, and I think that's just part of evolving. As an artist, I think you would feel that even for a song that you wrote 10 years ago, possibly, or, or a novel. So what I tried to do at the end of that screening was think, well, look at the impact this is having. People people get the core of it. Um, so I shouldn't be you know, pernickety about whether a study cam would have been nice here or there. But I think it's just having more tools to apply that direct to the trade that would be fun to, to ex experiment with. And very expensive. <laughs> and expensive. We have unlimited time. No, no, no. <laughs> And often I think time is a pressure for, for, for movies, so it's always a pressure for movies, but it's, I think, time with the actors to have a bit more time to explore uh, characters and, and um, ideas and to maybe shoot scenes that, that were supposed to be in the film and never made it would be, <laughs> would be great. I think the time thing would be more of a luxury. I mean, yeah, I think it's the same. I mean, with more, for more time, you need more money, and so yeah. that's usually why you don't have a lot of time. Um, and so it's really about just, as an, as an actor, having the space to do your work. And generally, in smaller movies, you don't have that much. You know, you kind of have to, like, deliver the minute you get there because of time. And so I think, you know, I'm very proud of the film, but of course, like, if we had more time, we could have maybe expound something else or explored something else and maybe done a cool shot from a different angle or whatever. You know, you could spend a day on a scene, which a lot of movies are afforded to do that, and you can really find so much in that. Um, but then on the other hand, there's also something really organic and, and spontaneous that happens in an environment of small. I've done so many independent films, and so if you have the right people involved and the right kind of hearts involved, and everyone knows what the, to expect when they go there, and don't get caught up on the fact that you don't have that stuff, then you can really like create in a different space, which is also very exciting. And for me, I think, uh, besides the money factor and time, <laughs> is to have a, a, some pre-sale distribution in place, because then it guarantees a wider release. And for that to happen, people need to know that they can invest the money and know that there is a, a bigger release and a, small, a smaller release that's more sort of niche. So I would have loved to, but then when you're a small, independent, first time, second time movie, it's not as easy to get. Thanks, guys. Yeah. Right. Next question. Uh, as queer women, what are your feelings on the importance of having queer actors portray queer characters on film and in television? Oh, I only cast queer actors. Where is Neil? It's actually something that has come up um, more recently for me as we cast our next film called Polarized, and it, it's, I think it's a I'm totally with this idea because I think it gives queer women more opportunity where I think there's been, there's two things. I think there's been such a taboo in Hollywood for women to come out because it, it feels like it's killing their career as a heterosexual character portrayal. So I think it's nice to show the other side of that, that you can have uh, queer women playing queer characters. But at the same time, I don't think it should be a limitation in the same way that I don't think... Uh, queer women shouldn't play heterosexual characters. Uh, on a practical level, for sales and distribution, sometimes people want a name, and if the only name you can think of is Kristen Stewart, and she's busy that moment, um, it's, they're, pr they're probably not enough queer actresses with enough profile to pre-finance a movie at this stage. So that's another consideration that people don't want to talk about, but it's a reality of making films. <laughs> no, it's, it's, uh, whoever suits the role uh, mo the most, really. I mean, I think it's limiting by saying um, so these are people can only play this role or that. It's really the person. Do they fit? Is the char chemistry there? Can they do it and do it with justice? And almost, it's sort of 
for me it's irrelevant as long as they portray the character well and can do it. I think it's just a very tricky thing. You know, I think I think the sentiment behind it, of course, is feeling like if, say, a queer actress. First of all, I think the labeling of an actress in any way is the problem, right? Like, you're not a queer actress, you're just an actress who in her personal life is <coughs> gay. So to me, your sexuality should be irrelevant in the sense of like, you're in your workspace. But I totally understand the idea that if that somehow has become something you're labeled with and then you're not able to get jobs as a quote, heterosexual person in a movie, which is all this, all this whole conversation is like, but, but this is the world we're in, right, um, is a problem that, of course, then you should be able to have the, the roles that are written, you know, for someone who's gay. But, like, to me, as an actress, I'm not interested in playing myself, and I'm not interested in playing roles that are like me totally in any fashion, right? So it's about stretching, and there's no point in being an actress if you're just going to be doing the same thing over and over again. But I do think, as a, as a producer and a content creator, I think you should just be open to to hiring people of all backgrounds and making sure there's a seat at the table for everybody, whatever that may mean. Um, but I don't think that can be the only factor. You know, I think it's much more of a holistic way of making movies. Um, since you're all like filmmakers, producers, content creators, like, you have produced uh, several films as well. Um, for you, direct days, like, do you also kind of want to go into directing? And uh, if so, what is the ideal or your dream project that you want to get made? Like if it's no matter the budget or whatever, if you had all the power in the universe, <laughs> what is the content that you would like to create? I mean, there's so many things. I, I mean, I get asked that question about directing a lot. It's definitely been in my head. I don't think I'm ready. I think there's a lot that I still have to learn in that world. Um, but I do love producing. And I will say, like this last movie that I produced called Hummingbird that I'm also in is a dream project in the content. You know, I wish we had a ton more money. You know, we talk about that because we didn't have the time and resources to do certain things. That being said, I'm really proud of what we have. It's highly original. There's nothing like that out there. And I'm really, really excited about sharing it when it's ready because um, it was made with people like bootstrapping everything and, and favors and people who love what they do. And they're very highly skilled people. And so be able, being able to like bring a team together of my choice was a dream. I think I'd kill the actresses and they'd kill me if I tried to direct them. So I'll <laughs> <laughs> she can tell me. But I'll stick to production. I, I enjoy the creative producing world much more. Uh, for me, I definitely like to move into directing. <laughs> Stay there. Um, no, but I think my my dream project is actually probably the Athena Protocol, which is what I'm the next book that I'm doing. And the reason that gets into that dream category for me is it's because it's much bigger in scope. It still has the things that are, I'm passionate about, which is strong female leads. It has kind of a political message behind it. It has. Uh, a lot of strong characters in it, but the, the scope of it and the genre is action and and thriller. And I think to do that really well, um, you know, it would be great to have a massive budget and plenty of time. So that would be fabulous if we could get started that at some stage. Can you tell you tell us a little more about your dream project? Yes, <laughs> the story, the 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 actors. Are. Well, <laughs> well, you have two projects, right? Yes, yeah, so, so the Athena Protocol is, is based on my next novel, uh, and it's about a rogue agency run by successful women um, who run a team of secret younger female agents who deal with human trafficking. So their, their remit is to go into the world and deal with things that governments and, and, uh, and uh, well, pretty much governments, never have time or budget to do, like human trafficking, um, you know, child uh, women and children, basically. So I thought that they're, they're kind of the champions and the superheroes, but in a very realistic way for that world. Um, so do I have dream cast for that? I, um, there are so many actors that I would love to work with, <coughs> other than Sheetal, of course. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it would be a dream to work with her again. Mm. Um, but I, you know, I, I tend not to write with one particular person in mind. And again, it's, as you said, it's all about finding the person who can portray that core of the character really well. And then we're doing another smaller film called Polarized. It's a love story between two women from very different sides of uh, contemporary America. Because I found it troubling that in 2018, uh, in a small town in America, there could be people who never meet each other, who live on completely different worlds, divided by race, religion, politics, um, and economics. 
So I thought, wouldn't it be interesting if you could have two women from, from these worlds who initially clash but actually end up falling in love and, and the impact that has on the family and the communities? Mm. Well, that's is there a lesbian love story in Athena for other cultures? Yes, there is. The, the, the lead character, it's told from the perspective of the youngest agent, the Athena Protocol, and her name is Jessie. Um, and she is uh, lesbian. She's coming, she's quite young. She's coming to terms with her feelings. Um, but there is a, a strong relationship in that movie. Yes. <coughs> what does it mean for you personally and for your career to come like an event like Clexico in London? Oh, I mean, I, 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 mean I, I, I feel very, I mean, it's so exciting, you know, to be around, I mean, the fact that, I still can't believe, I can't think straight has been, it's been 10 years, and obviously the world unseen as well. They're both, as I mentioned earlier, um, I could never have imagined the impact that these movies have had on so many, and you only, you, you hope for that, you know, you hope that when you make art that it impacts somebody, you know, at some point, um, other than yourself. And so I think the fact that um, to be invited and welcomed in this way is, is really sweet and very lovely. And actually, the things that I'm hearing from meeting everybody, and also being able to meet fans that have like been messaging me and tweeting me, and then finally being able to put a, to a face to a name has been really exciting. And then also just hearing what it is, what's the stories, you know. Obviously, people write to you, but like in person to hear the story and what it's done and why. And what I keep hearing about I Can't Think Straight is that the happy ending, which I didn't realize is so rare in yeah. stories having to do <laughs> with two women. And I'm, I'm like, is that true? And then they're like, yeah, actually, like either someone dies or there's drugs or there's something. And I'm, and, and I'm like, how is that supposed to give anybody hope? Or, but, you know, I just don't even understand, you know. I, I honestly, it blew my mind when I kept hearing over and over again, thank you for this movie. And I didn't even write the movie, but I'm just saying, like, it, it's, it's really, I learn. I'm learning a ton. And the fact that that is, that seems to be the reality of this kind of content is very troubling. <laughs> yep, that's, uh, that's shocking. <laughs> I know. No. Did you know that? I, I didn't actually, but I'm no, so it's after I can't think straight. <laughs> okay. just, uh, yeah, I think it was, it was just based on on us really, yeah. right. some fiction. Um, so it's it's amazing how much uh, it's affected women and how many women have come out as a result of this film in particular. I think the world is too, but especially I can't think straight. I think the coming out scene, yeah. people like word for word will quote me. This is what I said too. I'm like, oh my gosh, you did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, but this this one, and a lot of women have felt more comfortable in their skin. Maybe some haven't come out still, but they feel better about themselves. That it's it's okay to have such feelings or to go through this and to to come out. So. Coming to uh, events like this is very important, I think, to sort of continue with spreading the message and reaching more people. And giving it the space, like, and the, and the, the, the pedigree it deserves, you know? And I, I feel like you don't want to be in the corners. You should absolutely have, everybody has the right to have their own voice and, and space heard. And so, like, for Classicon do that, it's really tr tr great for them. Thanks. Thanks. Last question? Uh, slightly off the wall, because upstairs you were talking a lot about how much you do. You ended up found in a restaurant in Soho yes. recently. <laughs> was, well, quite a few years ago now, but yeah. so how, how did that even happen? It's like, <laughs> seriously, it's sanity. It's all stuff, and suddenly, <laughs> a restaurant. I, I'd yeah. like to know that too. <laughs> <laughs> Shamim took too long to finish her yeah, next I novel. <laughs> 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 I had a, a break. <laughs> No, it's just uh, it's something I was passionate. We're big foodies, yeah. and uh, I'm Palestinian. There aren't any Palestinian restaurants in, in London. So I wanted to share my, it was more sort of an emotional, cultural, message of sharing my culture through food because yeah. food is very sensual and it's many senses smell taste and so on so so it was just something that i had hoped to to do and to create and again there was a little lull but it was a <laughs> tough <laughs> tough portion even then <laughs> 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 i loved eating there so yeah oh, thank you, you. Have, thank you. Yeah, yeah, you. Been there a few times. oh fantastic yeah. well, thank you now well, we we closed no, we closed oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh. yeah we had a big drama with an investor. The lull has gone. Yeah. <laughs> but, but I think <laughs> I, I have a feeling it will be back. We might be back <laughs> in another location. Yeah. Cool. But we had an issue with one of the investors. A long story, but yeah. Which is the to be theme, continued. The theme to be of everything. Like being <laughs> anything is really right. the problem. I can't be yeah. straight to. Yeah. yeah. I'm so sorry. Wrap it up. Okay. Right. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. What? Hey. Oh no, I, I can't go to YouTube Space yet because I don't have enough subscribers. If you want more queer content, and I think you do, subscribe to my channel. Help me out.